Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This, of course, is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, music, lifestyle, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Otis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. Returning guest here on Pop Turnative. You recently <laughs> recognize her as Sophie Sanchez in Ginny and Georgia on Netflix. Umberly Gonzalez is back with us. Umberly, <laughs> thank you for coming back on the show. My pleasure. I always enjoy chatting with you. It's exciting. I mean, we I think it was like <laughs> Utopia Falls we had you on last time. I know. We're growing up. She's growing up. <laughs> I know. And then we're talking Ginny and George, which is fantastic. And the one thing I love about this show is just the character dynamics and the growth of all the characters, including your character. Was that something that was evident when you were kind of reading the script for this as well? Seeing all the growth of the characters on this show? For sure. And I remember, you know, as a cast, we all used to have read throughs mm -hmm. of every episode as they came out. Yep. And that was always my favorite part because I don't always get to see all the actors and their storylines. So to be able to know what's happening in the story, not just mine, it was so it was a gift, honestly, as an actor to know what's going on in the entire world. But every episode we were always like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And like you never see the big picture. Like I really didn't know it was going to be this when it came out like reading it we were like wow this is special there's some magic in here and the people involved are going to make it amazing but i had no idea it was going to be like this impactful in the world you know what i mean so it's Absolutely. kind of mind-blowing <laughs> it's funny too because there was so many because you know the uh you know, the announcements of like the cast and the crew and like Ginny and Georgia come out, right? And like it's spring all the all the information is like sprinkled out, right? And yeah. like I knew like a lot like it was funny how many like people I knew or knew of that were gonna be on this show. You know what it's I mean? Exciting, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Canada. I know like, Canada. And it was yeah. funny, Jennifer, I talked to Jennifer Robertson about it recently, and she also brought up she's like, Yeah, a lot of Degrassi folks too. <laughs> I know, right? Like three or four people, I don't even know. It's I amazing. I mean, it goes to show that, you know, there's so many American shows that shoot here in Canada and they end up do casting a lot of Canadian actors, but we have a lot of talent out here. I'm so proud of the shows that I've been involved in and I get to kind of represent that side of things and it gets to this worldwide level and I'm like, we're from Canada. Hello. Canada. We We're here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so Sophie Sanchez is a, uh, is a fan favorite. I mean, you see it on social media. I mean, I, I know it's awesome. <laughs> what is, what's that, that whole thing been like for you kind of seeing the re reception to your character? It's crazy. Wild, wild. I mean, listen, um, coming out of uh, Utopia Falls, I was already on a high, uh, being able to represent the Latin community and the queer community in a show like that. And then, you know, springing that forward to another queer character that is also very complex. And it's, it's amazing. Honestly, I feel like the universe kind of puts those opportunities in front of me so that I'm able to be an inspiration to younger audiences and like an advocate for, for that, those kinds of things. And it's like, I'm just in awe. I'm very grateful. It feels surreal at times. I did not know that I was going to have this many eyes on me and that people would feel so connected to Sophie yeah. honestly you know Absolutely. like I just I, I played her with authenticity and love and I think the story that she portrays in the show is just like a very easy real teenage story like yeah. where you fall in love and you go through heartbreak and you have to be honest and it's not easy like but the show did it in a way that was just like this is what it is and there's no like drama there's no like this big thing like it's just like a, a story that happens to a lot of people so i could see why people related to it so much and they're like i feel that feel that yeah absolutely there, there's so much there's so many characters and so many things going on but i mean the whole storyline with georgia and the young georgia played by nikki mm -hmm. rumel um, oh, so good. Th that whole dynamic is just <laughs> wild also, like they look so similar, the casting looks <laughs> so never think. On. I'm gonna tell her like, what yeah. I know they look yeah. pretty similar. Um, yeah, people will see also that uh, she has a uh, she has a similar last name as mine. Yep, yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like kind of in the show, but not really. <laughs> 
honorary cast member. Yeah, exactly, which is which is awesome. But it's pretty cool too to see, you know, a show with so much so many dynamic and, you know, emotional characters that kind of go through the highs and lows. Um mm-hmm. when you're kind of playing back and kind of seeing the show or seeing clips of it, right? Does it blow your mind about like some of these shows like Journey and Georgia that are able to capture so many kind of emotions and like one or two scenes. Like that's a bit mind blowing right? too. It is, but it's also so human, right? Yeah. Like when you think of it and you put it back into your life, how much you go through even in just one day and how fast your life can change by knowing this one piece of information and suddenly your whole world is upside down. Yeah. And I love that it does that. That's why it's so fast paced, but it's the complexity of the situations that these characters find themselves in that it may seem so simple, like a simple text just completely ruins like an entire relationship or like one discovery, meeting one person and suddenly your whole life has changed. But I think that is so, it's so real with how life is, you know, yeah. like one day I'm sitting here, the next, like someone could ring my doorbell and it's like a long lost cousin. Like, I don't know, you know, it's like, <laughs> what? Yeah. like your life can change in yeah. a second. Like that's how it is. It's, it's, it's crazy. And it's interesting too, because one of the things that I thought was very powerful and kind of, I'm really into like, I love like with your character and Sarah's character and everything. Like I just love, I love like dialogue between people. Yeah. That's like my banter. go-to. <laughs> what? Yeah. Banter. The exactly. Banter, yeah. Um, and that's why I'm starting to really love horror movies a lot because the horror movies <laughs> now that are scary, like that I love the most. Yeah. I th- we, I sent you that list, remember? Yes, so good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen most, if not there's all. There's a of lot them more. There's yeah. so many. There's so many horror movies right now. But I think the so reason good. why, to, this is my question, is there's kind of like words are basically powerful. There's so many things that could be said in horror movies. That you don't need the jump scares. Like people are scary. What they say to each other are scary. are scary. This is true. You can get into someone's psyche. I mean, that's why I love psychological thrillers because. Yeah. It's all about in the like if you can think it, think it, it can happen. And Mm -hmm. fear for us really is so personal. So if you can get into someone's head, it's game over. Absolutely. (laughs) You dabbled a little bit in the horror here and there. You did that movie we talked about last time. The the Pictures in the Woods. Yeah. Killer High. Killer High. Yeah. We we actually I went back to watch that interview again because our first interview, because of Ginny and Georgia is Mm -hmm. getting a lot of the views right now and people are going back to seeing it. And then we talked about Killer High for a good amount of time in that interview. (laughs) It's a good one. That was like such a fun experience. Yeah. What were some learning experiences for you as as a storyteller and actor working on Ginny and Georgia? Oh my goodness. Well, one of the main ones was definitely um, working with intimacy coordinators on set. Mm -hmm. That was really great because they made such a safe space for Sarah and I to um, to explore intimacy. And I really appreciated that the show really it wasn't about sex and showing skin and having it be this like very like in your face shock value. It was more about like actually connecting and intimacy. And I got to really do that in the show, which I had never done before you know yeah. to like kiss someone for a long time and get caught up in a moment and like yeah. really be there with that person it was such a great learning experience um because it was new for both sarah and i so mm-hmm. we got to kind of make this like pact and be like we got each other and we have the guidance of casey hudecki who was like our our intimacy coordinator and that was so beautiful i just felt like the scene itself like i remember watching and i was like oh my goodness just remembering choreographing all of it and going like step by step and just being there with another actor while there's like people watching you and suddenly it's just going to be in netflix worldwide it's a huge it's a huge thing for me right you're sharing a very vulnerable part of yourself so it really taught me about the power that we have uh with you know, there's words, but then there's also like movement and behavior and like how to portray love and intimacy without it being this like, you know, dangerous shock value type of thing. So I learned a lot from that and I feel a lot more comfortable uh, going into intimate scenes in other projects now that I've had that experience. So I'm very grateful for the team. Yeah, for that. no, that's a lot of insight that I didn't, that's, mm-hmm. so is that, was, was there kind of like, you talk about like the intimacy and everything were there kind of like segments like were there days like on set where it was like like dedicated to those scenes or anything like how did that work yeah and we would know that they were coming up and we have 
you know, we have a contact with Casey and she's like, you know, if you have any questions, doubts, concerns, you can talk to me at any point. Yeah. Um, and when those scenes happen, it was obviously like a close set. Only people who were meant to be there will be there. Um, so they just, you know, they took care of us in a huge way. And I really appreciated that. For sure. You, you talked about a little bit, you know, Netflix worldwide. I mean, literally next Netflix Ooh. worldwide, people are watching you as Sylvie Sanchez like, everywhere. The DMs are probably like, the, the comments are probably like from all over the globe. All over the world. Yeah. I mean, for me, this one was special because it's the first time that my family back home in Venezuela and my friends in, in Latin America were able to watch something that I was yes, in. Yes, that's right. Because they can A, watch it in Spanish, B, just have it available on a platform without having to like dig the internet for some obscure website and find it you know like this is the first time that i was like hey just literally click on netflix and it's right there and my family they let you know my parents live in saudi arabia they were able to watch it there all their friends were able to watch it there it was huge so for me it was just kind of like this transcendent thing that like it's no longer north america it's like all over the world literally like i was looking at my following and like the main countries that my followers are from and like Poland is in there, Brazil. That's crazy. Like, it's crazy. And I'm like, Poland, like that's so cool. It's pretty crazy because I think you and I did the first interview. I think we did it like almost a year ago, like during the during yeah. the beginning, like I think maybe April or May. Like it was during like the like the first the like first, the first year of the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. And I remember that's when my show basically took off because I had um interviews set up with people from Outer Banks on Netflix yeah. and I had them scheduled like before it was out. Right. Cause that's what happens a lot more. A lot of people like ask me about misconceptions in my show. We have these interviews scheduled like way in advance. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then they're sitting on a library, like in a library and then get to go out when it's out. So you don't know what's happening. And this yeah. show just exploded. And my yeah. viewership was literally like all so over the cool. world. Like it was, so it was, happy for you. yeah, no, it was, it was crazy. Um, is it safe to say also that, you know, you've, you've worked on so many, like, you worked on so many movies and shows and you have one, you actually have a movie coming out, coming out soon, Nobody. Yes. Which, the trailer for that movie, like, like blew my mind. Like, I know, I, I'm so excited <laughs> to watch it. I'm, like, action-filled. Bob Odenkirk is incredible in it. So, really, I'm just so excited to watch, yeah. But it's, like, my question to you is, you seem to work on a lot of different projects and i mm -hmm. feel like that would kind of that complements someone as a storyteller as an actor do you agree with that do you agree like that yeah. the fact that you're able to work on many genres that kind of complements your like the craft a little bit for sure and it goes to show that i'm not just this like one color of a person i mean nobody is mm -hmm. and i think that if we dig deep as humans and artists we are capable of transforming and becoming any of the characters that we get offered mm -hmm. i think the great thing is that there's a through line through all my characters, which is there's always going to be a part of me. Yep. Um, and everything else around that is just that character's belief system that changes or, you know, whether it matches mine or I have to change some of mine to fit theirs. But at the same time, in, in the core of it all, it's still me. And so to be able to play all of those characters is exciting because I'm also in turn discovering parts of myself that I never get to, you know, like I got to play a doctor last year. That's bizarre to me and it's it was one of the first nurses where i get to be mature right and like and canada sorry canada, <laughs> like, it's amazing and so to go from literally like playing a 16 year old like sci-fi world to being like a grown doctor or like er just completely different and they're all challenges and i learn with each one it's a new experience and it's and it's getting me ready for like what's coming next, right? Those big, big things that I'm working towards. So, yeah. Is it bad that I completely forgot about nurses? I, <laughs> like, come on. It's not <laughs> bad. It Judy and Georgia. No, because I definitely know, like we've talked about it many times. And I know Donald yeah. McLean Jr. and everyone else on that. But like, yeah, I, I guess it's because it's not, it's not out yet, the new season. No. So, yeah. you know, we got picked up by NBC, which is which incredible. Is, yeah. So season one just finished not too long ago on NBC. Uh, so second season must be coming this year at some point. I'm sure that there will be an announcement, but I'm yeah. very excited for that one. It's definitely different from anything I've ever, ever done. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays, you know, and like have a mature role, like a character with a career, the lingo of being a doctor, like that was not easy. Just there's, a, there was a lot of challenges and it was really fun. Like that team was incredible. Absolutely. And also, mm -hmm. you know, the, the new Philly angel in Canada, which was huge I too. I know. 
true. I feel like there's so many things to talk about. Like, it's like yeah, that happened after. But it's a talk. good. That's a good thing. Like, there's so yeah. many things to talk about, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's so cool. Honestly, like, that was amazing. Me- me- meeting Linda, like, the original creator, <laughs> that was a highlight. Just hanging out with her on a cloud all day. Um, and Have just, just little... able to represent Did you guys have friends. a lot of snacks? Yeah, just, oh, my God, I ate so much cream cheese that day. Production <laughs> was literally like, I'm really, you don't have to eat it every time. And I'm like, it's so good. <laughs> I'm not eating it. Like, we already hired you. Like, Kraft is on the side being like, good choice. Like, yeah. yeah. That is amazing. Umberly, thank you so much for coming back on Popternative. Seriously. Of course. Anytime. I have no doubt I will be back again. Oh, it's going to happen. And I, I have no doubt you're going to be getting a new horror movie list pretty soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Because I watched a few recently. There's all these, like, uh, four, um, there's this Polish movie I watched a couple of nights ago on Netflix Ooh. called All My Friends Are Dead. It's insane. <gasps> oh, wow. Did you watch that yet? No. It's crazy. I have not watched anything in it's a while. It's a New Year's Eve house party, okay. and it's a New Year's Eve house party, and things go real. It's oh, in Poland. Oh, okay. Polish. Yeah, okay. it's on Netflix. That's on my list. <laughs> it's crazy. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything again? Umberly. Literally just my name <laughs> on Twitter, at Umberly, because my name is so unique. Um, and Twitter is just at Umberly G, because Gonzalez. Yeah. Of course. Amazing. Well, <laughs> this has been Pop Turnative. YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Till next time, this is Umberly Gonzalez and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.